Warmest greetings from the Adventist World Radio. Welcome back to our Point 28 program of the AWR Center for Digital Evangelism. Today is the ninth day and we are so glad to have you all joining us. And I'll say this again. You are not here by accident, but because God has providentially appointed that His love can reach you through this program. program. Let me ask you, what would you do if someone paid a debt you can never pay? What kind of relationship will you have with that person? Here's the good news. Someone loves you that he died for you, that you might have the gift of eternal life. Stay tuned. We'll learn more about this. Let us pray. Our Father God, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. His life, His death, His resurrection, for this is the only way that we can spend eternity with you. We ask for the filling of the Holy Spirit to bless us now and the sharing of your word. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hello everyone, I am Carl and we are so glad that we are here again and we are so thankful that you are always joining us as we discuss, discuss about the very important topic of our series point 28 and we are now in point number 9, the life, death and resurrection of Christ. I'm going to ask you today, who is Christ to you? For me, personally, Christ is my personal savior christ is my god christ is the one that i'm hoping and looking forward to for his second coming because i want to be with him someday and to, tonight and today we are going to discuss about ab about his life his death and his resurrection how jesus is both god and human how jesus faced the same struggle as humanity, Jesus' ministry on earth, a living example for us, Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, and Jesus' resurrection and what that means for us. Those are the objectives of our study as we are going to talk about to today about this very important topic of our God. I'm going to ask you a very important question. When Jesus was here on earth. Is he, letter A, 100% human? Or letter B, 100% God? Or letter C, is he both 100% God and human? What is your answer? You can participate by uh, comment, com commenting in our... Uh, by... Uh, by um, doing some uh, comments below and uh, I hope that we arrive at the same answer. The correct answer is maybe some of you are surprised and maybe some of you are uh, will, will think that it's impossible because the right answer is letter C. Jesus while he was here on earth he was he was both 100% God and 100% human. Yes, you heard me right. He is both 100% God and 100% human. Okay, how Jesus is both God and human? Can the Bible tell us about his humanity and his divinity at the same time? In, in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Okay, as you can see here, there is no Jesus Christ yet. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, verse 2, He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. So as you can see, John referring to the subject, which is, Word or the Word who is with God, who is also God, and the Word is also the Creator. So, who is He then? Then, as we read on the chapter of John 1, especially in verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Okay, so this, the, the Word, the Creator, the one with God, the God, became flesh and dwell among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. So now, who is this, who is, who is the subject? And the subject now are being, um, are being uh, regarded as the one become flesh and dwell among us. Can you guess who, who, is, who is the one? In Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on, on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, sins of peace. So, can you, uh, can you see the connection of those texts, though despite that, you know, years of, uh, years of gap between the authors, between Isaiah and, and, uh, and, uh, and John? But as you can see in Matthew 1 verse 23, the virgin will conceive and con will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, with, which means God with us. So as you can see, the one that John is referring to the, to the word the creator, the one with, with God and the one who is God and also the creator who become flesh. And now uh, supported by Isaiah, and now supported by uh, by Matthew, that um, the one being conceived by the Virgin, who is uh, who is Mary, is uh, they call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So as you can see, there is really uh, the relationship with, with those verses. And, and Philippians 2 verse 6 to 8 says, Who being in very nature, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing but taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. I think our our point nine, the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, is actually presented here in these verses. Philippians 2, verse 6 to 8. He, uh, uh, as you can see in verse 8, says, And being found in the appearance of man, okay, the life, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, death, and death on the cross. Okay, and uh, as you can see, brothers and sisters, friends who are watching online, um, you may you you may ask me. So, is there any other proof from the Bible or any story in which we can really say and really we can really prove that Jesus Christ is both one hundred percent human and one hundred percent God? Though, despite that. All those verses coming from John, uh, he mentioned about the origin, where Jesus came from, and uh, and Isaiah who pre who predicted about how he will become human being, and uh, from and then uh, it will jump to to Matthew that the actual one, the actual uh, birth of Jesus Christ, that uh, it will he will be conceived by the Virgin, and he will. And Virgin Mary will give birth to him, uh, and and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. As you can see, all of those, and then you you will see. Okay, so how how is his life? So is there any any proof from the Bible? Uh, what, uh proof from the Bible, um, pertaining about his divinity and uh, humanity, aside from those, um. Uh, being mentioned or being uh, um, being that we we have the verses that we are being provided. So, brothers and sisters, for me, I found a very interesting and very convincing story in the Bible when Jesus was here on earth, and that that is recorded in Matthew chapter four, verse one to eleven. When Jesus, you know, before he entered into the ministry of God, before doing the ministry of, 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 of the Father, Jesus Christ decided to keep away from the city, from the crowd, and he chose instead oh, to be alone in the wilderness. Here, are, here is the story. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11, it says, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So first of all, as you can see here in the text, he was hungry. It, it, depict, it depicts about the condition of a human being. 
being hungry, the tempter came to him and said, Okay, look at this one. Uh, later on, we will understand who is this temp tempter or who's the one who tempted Jesus Christ. He said, The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You see, as you can see, if you are going to look in a very uh, uh, deep, deeper detail of uh, the statement of the tempter, it actually mentioned here, if you are the Son of God. As you can see here, that the tempter is actually implying that, yes, he is, and at the same time, he is trying, he was trying to give Jesus Christ some doubts about his identity. So, and the point that the tempter wasted some time, some effort to test Jesus, that's for me is actually an implication that Jesus Christ is prone, is also at risk of disobedience as a human, just like a human being. So, because first of all, Satan will no longer uh, make an, some effort or time or uh, give uh, some, you know, controversy with someone who is really, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, nonsense or it will, it's useless. But for me, why is it Satan is giving, giving Jesus Christ some time, giving him some effort to tempt him? So that means for me, Satan is actually convinced that Jesus Christ is in the in, in in the form of humanity. He is human being, hundred percent human, human that is also subject to failure or to sin, to fall on into sin. And uh, Jesus answered, "It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on the but on every word that comes." from the mouth of God. As you can see, Jesus Christ always referring to the, the, to the message coming from the Bible. And then, then the, de the devil, you see, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you a while ago that this is the verse, uh, the, the verses that really uh, implied that uh, Jesus Christ is both human and God. Because, you know, he didn't just tempt Jesus Christ once. He again tempted him for another another trial, another try. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone Against the stone. And verse 7, Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Wow! Again, the reply of Jesus Christ is very direct to the point saying, and very, very confident, you know, in a, in a, in a very a hungry human condition, and in, in a very, you know, very simple, humble appearance of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, struggling with the dev uh, against the devil, it's very hard for Jesus Christ to do that. And as you can see here, but he is very confident about his answer. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. See, Satan, and who is the one uh, that uh, Satan is testing? It's Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ replied to him, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, Satan didn't, did not end there. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, the, and their splendor. As you can see, if Jesus Christ is actually um, God, and uh, I know that uh, Satan is very aware of that because he was, he was with him in heaven. Uh, they they were together. Satan is one of the best angel uh, in heaven who led the choir there. 
and who also he, he was he was the leader back then that's why he is familiar with jesus christ and as you can see here if jesus christ is really uh, uh he, he appeared really as a god at that time when he was here on earth and he doesn't have you know the um, the element of the element of human being of humanity in him satan will not waste his time because satan is very clever satan is veteran he, he, he knows how to how to tempt everyone and then his as you can see here he even he even sh uh, showed to Jesus Christ the kingdoms, the world, the splendors, the richness, and all all the cities and everything. You know, those are temptations for the human being, for 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 someone like me, someone may, may, might be you or someone human being. Like, oh, I will give you the car, I will give you the good the houses, the richness, and all. And and all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. But, you see, you, uh, but this is very surprising. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. <laughs> what a very confident, powerful Jesus Christ Despite of his condition at the time, he was able to he was able to have this great battle with Satan. And despite of his condition that he was very weak at that time, he was so hungry and he was he was alone. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended. You see. When Jesus mentioned to him, worship the Lord your God, he ran. He ran. So that means he was convinced that the one who is speaking is Jesus Christ, the Lord your God. So here, that's why for me, this, this story is, the, uh, is, is actually the implication of Jesus Christ is both 100% human. Why? Because he was hungry. Again, and he was he was being tempted by Satan because only human beings and only those creatures are are subject for, to his temptations. And he knows that once Jesus Christ is in the garb uh, uh, wrapped up with uh, humanity, he knows that he will be subject, and he is also prone to uh, risk his perfection. So, brothers and sisters. Um, as you can see here, and Jesus replied to him with confidence that you will worship the Lord your God and serve him only, and he ran. So that means, brothers and sisters, it depicts that Satan convinced that the one he is utterly tempting is the God, is the Lord, is, the, is, 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 his, is his Lord. And his God, and then, um, according to Revelation twelve verse nine, you see, this is what, what, uh, what is the, what is the feature or what is the, what is the characteristic of Satan, and the great dragon was cast out, that serpent, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out in onto the earth and his angels were cast out with him so as you can see here brothers and sisters friends the one who tempted jesus is not just you know an amateur he was the serpent of all meaning veterans devil oh. satan the great dragon very um, intimidating and all but jesus christ praise the lord and praise god that jesus christ overcame the temptation of devil of that devil um okay now we understood that uh, jesus christ is really 100% human and 100% god are you curious what is the life of jesus christ while he was here on earth does he go to gym <laughs> and build his muscles does he 
uh, play basketball, uh, let's see, uh, uh, go gather, gardening. What what is his activities while he was here on earth? Are you curious? Uh, are you curious to know that, brothers and sisters? And um, you know, people are actually trying to make their life the standard of others but uh but we have differences we have this kind of uniqueness that god has created us but one thing is for sure i'm curious about okay jesus christ how you live how god if jesus christ if god will live today nowadays how he will he will behave how his activities and i want to know what kind of activities and what are you know what are the what are the directions of his life and what is his goal while he was here on earth? Brothers and sisters, I'm going to list down some of the, I cannot list down them all, but as you can see, brothers and sisters, friends, he was born in humble conditions. So he's not rich. He was not rich. He did not grow up among privileged. He was homeless and penniless. He was bullied by religious leaders. Wow. Jesus Christ was being um, is really human being to the point that even religious leaders, you know, trying to bully him. He was tempted by the devil himself, as what we have discussed a while ago. Seek and save the Lord. Those are the activities of Jesus Christ. Healing the sick. He also cast out demons and even raised the dead. Teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus often drew crowd with his sermons and parables. He spent considerable time sharing good news with the poor. But Jesus did confront the misguided religious leaders by his day. He was intentional about his relationships with his disciples. So he is he's really a social being, Jesus Christ. Also, he felt the need of the needs of the people. He's not snobbish, he's, he's not racist. He fed the hungry. He touched the untouchable. He ate dinner with the outcasts of society. He welcomed the involvement of children. Even those children, uh, sometimes children are, are un kind of annoying. But Jesus Christ, you know, embraced them, welcomed them. Although he just, um, he just have, he just had a short, uh, I'm in his ministry here on earth, but he still make some time so that the the children, those little ones, are um, were being you know involved in his ministry. Okay, and then people are crowding him, crowding whenever Jesus uh, was around. You know, if he if if Jesus go to the, the, the a certain place, even though that is not that that is that is not announced. People will really, you know, find him, uh, search for him because they they really love to be with Jesus because of his teaching, because of his miracles, because of of, of the blessings that Jesus brought to the world. And you know what happened, brothers and sisters, because of Jesus' popularity, even the disciples are tempted that Jesus Christ were Jesus Christ were uh, is. About uh, is um uh, Jesus Christ is going to build His kingdom in this world, and uh, they are they are excited. Who will be the the one sitting at the right and sitting on the left, and who will be the one in a high, who will be the one you know um having the highest position and all and everything is like that. But the thing, brothers and sisters, is like that people are really blessed to have Him, and people are really la would like to be with jesus and e even at, at night time even he was traveling you know uh, on the boat or uh you know in uh, teaching you know in the seaside on the mountain you know in the wilderness people people are gathering out uh, around him you know brothers and sisters if jesus christ uh is here right now in in our and in our era, he will be trending. There no nobody will really be so trending as Jesus Christ if he's 
if he is around today, but I'm so I'm I'm, but I'm surprised and I'm actually sad because um, his word is not trending nowadays. People are, you know, disregarding the word of God and uh, they are not really interested about Jesus Christ. But unlike before, when they embrace the life of Jesus Christ, they understood the ministry of Jesus Christ. People are really love to crowd around and learn from him. And then, you know, brothers and sisters, so when people, when a lot of people are excited and wants, want, want, wanted him to be the king, you know what happened, what, what happened, brothers and sisters? From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, that he must be killed and on the third day be raised dead. He's trying to explain, this is my life, this is, this is my future. This is what will happen to me in the in the in a few more uh, weeks or days. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Knowing Peter that he was very impulsive and he was very arrogant and proud disciple, he's just saying, "No, Jesus Christ, if I am here, no one will touch you." Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Matthew, Matthew 16, 21 to 23. So, brothers and sisters, friends, what I'm trying to say here is that Jesus understood his ministry and his, his, uh, his mission, his objective, while he needs to live the life why he needs to, 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 to leave heaven and be with us. He knows that uh, he, needs to, he, he needs to be uh, the, the, the sacrifice. That's what Jesus Christ is trying to explain to them. He said, he is the atoning sacrifice. First John 2 verse 2, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the, for the whole world. In 1 Peter 1, verse 18 to 19, For you know that it, it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from, the, from, the, from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb being blemished or defect. In Romans 6, 20, it says, For the wages of sin is death. And here in 1 Peter 18, 1 verse 18 to 19 says, You are not going to, you are not going to be redeemed by the treasures of this world, even though you are super rich in this world. That will not, that will not do, that will not, um, because it cannot, that one is, cannot, cannot redeem you from, from death, from, to, 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 for you to escape death because of sin. Only Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. And he said, Jesus answered them. And you, and you, and you see, brothers and sisters, um, my God, my Jesus Christ, uh, took the path of death despite that he has everything in heaven. He doesn't need to come down because who, who are we to be as his creatures? And, uh, you see, brothers and sisters, um, that's the that's the point also that why Jesus Christ is one hundred percent human being is because he is he he will he will experience death because if he is God he will not experience death. Okay, so but the thing is then if is then you, uh, I mentioned also that he is also one hundred percent God and I think this text will really explain to us as well. John 2 verse 19 says, Jesus answered to them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. It's like saying, it's like saying, okay, you can kill me now, but I will assure you that after three days, I will, I will, I will take my life back. Who can, who can do that? Who can do that unless you are a God? 
And he said, dito, the, the, and, and he said, the, and the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just as I said, come and see the place where he lay. Matthew 28, 5 to 6. So Jesus Christ lived in this world to give us the example of how we should be living in this, in this life. And he needs to undergo. He needs to take the path of death in order for us to redeem us from our sins. And that doesn't end there. Because the success of this mission is when he resurrected from life. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and when the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, 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 death, is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 55. So brothers and sisters, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given me, on, given to me. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, that, whosoever be, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, friends, wherever you are, look at those verses. Those are promises coming from, from, coming from, from, coming from the Bible, from our God, saying that all the authority, you know, you know, when I'm just thinking that people are not really excited about when Jesus um, mentioned about some of his promises to, especially to, the, to, to, to his disciples. That's why they are, they are really not so keen to his messages and to his instruction because he was rough. He was, he, uh, he was in, he took the human form in a very humble and very, and uh, he lived in a low life, um, while he was here on earth. But brothers and sisters, you know, you see, it makes sense. His, his promises, those written in the Bible are, have, have, is now making sense because he rose from the dead. Something like this is, this is, this is over. This is over. That's the reason why, and this is the God that me, I know. This is the God I know. This is the God that I'm serving. And this is the God I want to be with for the rest of eternity because there is no such thing as for the rest of my life. Because while I'm, I'm dreaming about eternity. Brothers and sisters, point number nine, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. If you are going to ask me, what is this subject all about? I have one, I have only one sentence that I'm going to leave that to each and every one of us. God exhausted the best in heaven and do everything he could just to save you and me. He took the he took the human form. He took the path of death. He resurrected just for us to be saved. Just for you and me not, not to waste our life here. Just for you to for you and me to have the light the truth, and to guide us in this uh, in in this life, that there is hope. Whatever conditions that we are in right now, the questions that I'm going to leave to you tonight, today, or this morning, or this evening, whether uh, whenever you are, brothers and sisters, friends, how about if Jesus God gave everything to you? Just to say, how about you and me? To what extent are we willing to give up? For him? I'm gonna leave this question. Make it personal. Make it personal question that you will, you know, contemplate it while you heard this message about. God that we serve. This is the God that I'm looking forward to for his second coming. 
because I want to be the God. I want the, 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 the God who gave up everything just to save me and to give me hope. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to study your word, for giving us the series, point 28 series, and we are now in point number nine. Lord, we we understood and we now clear to us that everything that we are discussing here is all pointing to the hope and to the knowledge that we should be thinking about our Savior and our God who is so loving enough and who is so um, caring to each and every one of us so that someday when you come, when you come, come back from the second time, you will, you will receive, you will receive us in your, in, in your, um, you will receive us to you and be with you forever and you will the sting of death, we will not, we will, uh, we will not, never, we will never experience the sin. We will never experience all the things that, all the bad things that we experience here on earth, but all the joys and happiness forever with you. That was point nine. It is our prayer that the messages have been bringing you so much hope. We'll see you again tomorrow. Please spread a word. Share the program with your family and your friends. If you have questions about our topic or if you want further Bible study, we love to hear from you. You can put it down in the comment section or message us directly here in our page. Jesus looks at you. As a candidate for heaven, you are the one he had come to save, including your family, your friends, and everyone that is dear to you. He was thinking about you while he was suffering his deep wounds on the cross, wishing and praying that at some point in your life, like now, his great love will be known to you. And he is knocking at your heart's door and you that you will receive him in your life. Will you? Again, this is Leymary for AWR, Center for Digital Evangelism. Point 28. Thank you for joining us in this beautiful, magnificent Bible study that we're doing, Point 28. And if in case you have more questions, you want to clarify things, then you can send us a message, send us an email, comment down here in this video so we can guide you in a Bible study. Once again, if you have questions, if you want to learn more, if you want to have a Bible study with us, we are more than willing, our missionaries will be ready to share a Bible study with all of you.